Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial and this is next level of RMA. This year, I am giving it all, I'm going all in, I'm gonna be sharing much better content, much better recording, audio, video, and hopefully you guys like it. Now, here's the first thing. This year, I'm going to be shifting the way that I teach. I've been creating very quick tutorials, super fast, and teaching very small tips. However, I believe that this is much more helpful to you guys. I'm creating really cool renders, really cool project files by myself, and then we're gonna go through them together, step by step, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to make them, share the project files, and then you can archive this and have libraries to pull from when you start projects, not from scratch anymore, but from really solid bases that I'm gonna teach you how to do. So today, let's talk about displacement. This is what we're going to be creating. And what's interesting about this is the level of quality on the displacement. Now, this comes from Grayscale Gorillas Textures, link right here. Check out Grayscale Gorillas Textures. They're not paying me for do, to do this, but I believe that they are doing a wonderful job in the way that they create their displacement and their textures. However, this doesn't change anything about this tutorial. I cannot give you the files for the, for the textures, but I will teach you how displacement works in Houdini and how to get it set up with Redshift. Now, without further ado, let's check it out. So, inside of Houdini, um, let's see, inside of Houdini, I will be giving you this file. You will have the cache for um, the face and the cache for my HDRI so that you can get the same results. In the scene, if we pull out, I've already set up a very basic light setup so that you guys can get started right away. And that is this light right here set to 2%, this light right here to five, and an RS dome that has the HDRI already set with a little bit of color to get you guys set up, okay? Then we have a few cameras in the scene, which you've already seen on the example renders that I kicked out, but it's basically camera one, camera two, all the way to camera four, okay? And if you scrub in Houdini, you will see that it moves a little bit. And the movement is coming from a transform down here that is animated to move the face a little bit. Now, the only thing that uh, you need to know about the cameras is that if you select the camera and you hit enter on your viewport and then hit Z, you will see this little handle, which once you go to Redshift camera and enable depth of field, you will be able to get depth of field in the camera and it looks really nice. If you can't see this redshift tag, what you do is you come here, you go to shelf and you go to redshift um, right here, uh, redshift. And if you hit here, it's going to create a tab for redshift in here. You click your camera and you say camera right here. And then you select your model and you say object here. And then it's going to create this little tab here for your model as well. Okay. So you have this cache. You have the transform and I'm deleting a few attributes just to clean up our geometry, just to keep it clean. Um, and then we're doing a UV project, right? The only thing that the UV project is doing, if you drop down a UV project, you connect it and then we say initialize and then we move this to be projecting the UVs onto the geometry. That's what I'm doing to visualize my U with a UV quick shade the texture because I just want it to be projected on, on, on the front. Any kind of UVs work. There's multiple different methods of creating UVs, but in this case, just a UV project will do. Okay. Then the transform to have it rotate a little bit and let's have a look at the texture. All right. So if we go into our material context, you'll notice that I've set up this texture. This is the sauce. This is what you need to know. You want to drop down a, Redshift standard material. So RS standard, RS standard material, and a redshift material that after that, you connect this here, and then you select this. And these are the parameters that we get to play with. I'm gonna break it down in a very easy way. What, what that is, is one, two, three, and four different things. The first thing is the, um, the beauty. So in my case, I am using the Redshift uh, Grayscale's Gorilla texture for the base color. So this is your diffuse, your color. 
then the roughness and then the displacement connected to an RS displacement so if you do RS displace right and then you just connect this here onto your input texture scale texture map and then this goes into your displacement okay then the other gotcha is on the range you want to select negative one and one the reason being is that negative one is going to push into the geometry and the one is going to push out that's how we're going to create displacement based on textures okay then here is an rs math that i was using to control some parameters and testing i'm going to remove that to simplify this so meaning this is just a displacement texture connected to the displacement with this new range set up now the last little tip that i want to show you guys is in the texture i want to say copy parameter on the scale and paste relative reference right here that way when i say 0.4 it changes it here as well so we're changing the scale of the texture um, both in x and y at the same time now if i change the scale of my diffuse i want to change the scale sorry of my roughness and my displacement at the same time so i'm gonna say copy here copy parameter and paste relative reference on my scale for my roughness and paste relative reference on the scale for the displacement now anytime i change this it's going to automatically change it on all of them so let's say six right here 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 this 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 this 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 it's a very nice way of like changing um your g your textures on more complex things all procedurally okay now let's go back to the object level and here's the other thing that is a gotcha you want to select your geometry let's come to our camera and let's see how many polygons we have so on a smooth wire shader or flat wire shader you will see that this geometry does not contain enough polygons to be displaced so what i want to do is redshift tessellation and enable the tessellation that way we're creating more geometry on render time only and then you want to enable the displacement right here um that's basically it if we go to our output context out context you'll notice that i've already set up three nodes three redshift outputs and each of them have a different camera okay and the output is set to dollar os slash dollar os dot dollar f what that means is when i hit render it's going to create a folder called displacement this name right here then inside is going to create each exr for every frame with the same name to it so if we connect them all to a merge and we make sure that on our main the non-blocking current frame rendering is turned on you can just leave this rendering overnight and you can render batch renders okay so let's come here and set render view and see what we get and you will notice that as soon as i render um our geometry our displacement is probably usually going to be pretty high so i'm going to show you guys how to modify that this is going to take a little bit of time to load because the displacement is really high okay guys so see how like the displacement is very very high so what we want to do is we want to come to our object level and we want to select our model and we're gonna do displacement scale let's just say like 0.1 see how much displacement this gives us bam right on the money so see how nice the displacement is at a 0.1 and then you can play with this 0.01 0 0.2 or whatever you want depending on the texture that you're playing with now right now i feel like my material uh i want to tweak a few little things very very subtle things so if you select the standard material you will notice that the reflection is a little bit high so let's just reduce that a little bit um, and then the second thing that I did is add a little bit of coding, coding with a little bit of roughness. That's going to make it um, catch really nice reflections. And then you can play with the roughness gamma, which is making the, the roughness more white or less white. That means that your product is getting more or less roughness. What roughness does is basically blurs the reflections a little bit. So let's see if my gamma is set to 0.01 then it's gonna look more like clay because it's gonna be less reflective. Let's have a look. I 
let's see. Okay, so you can see when I increase it, it looks way more reflective. So let's do 0 0.01 or something like that. And you will see that it, it feels more like clay, like what I'm going for. All right, and then we can check out right here the different cameras and you can you guys can see that we're getting that beautiful depth of field which is set the way that I showed you at the beginning. So with this, I mean, this is a little bit of a cheat because I'm using Grayscale's Gorilla's textures, but that's how you get it set up. You basically want to use um, the displacement node right here. You want to play with the roughness and the, and the beauty, which is like your diffuse pass. And then you want to play with making sure that on your object, you either use tessellation unless your object has really high poly count and then enabling the displacement right here. Then the last little notch that you can do is you can play with hitting this button right here and playing with your um, color correction and photographic exposure at um, render time. All right, guys, um, I hope this tip is helpful. I will be posting the project file Check it out. If you have any questions, leave a link below and subscribe. Thank you very much.